to evaluating opportunities across all asset classes, we typically invest in single and multifamily residential. So it already shows you. He's telling you what he's into. Real estate. So let's start with the first person in this list. A guy that you might know, you guys might know. This is, this is the only guy I knew by name. By name. I only know him because he played at the Bulls. I'm a Bulls guy. I've been always been a uh, Bulls guy. I was a Michael Jordan supporter in his high, high time, you know. Yeah, yeah. Seth, well, well, yeah, yeah continue. Continue, continue. You can say. Yeah, because he played, he played with, he played later. He played with. Yeah, he played later, yeah. Uh, Derek Rose. And when Derek Rose yes, was Derek Rose. Time. Yeah. Yeah. And I was. I mean, I always watched Bull fan, um, Bulls games. Mm. I was a bit, I am. I have to still say I am. <laughs> I was. I you're was. Not, you, you almost said it. You almost said it. Are you slip. going out? Or are you I going don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm a Pistons fan. I mean, I've been a Pistons fan in two, since 2004. And that was the best year of the Pistons, let's say, post the uh, Detroit Bad Boys era. Yeah. You, you you joined at the uh, at the top. You should join at the bottom. Then you can grow at the top. I've tried that with the Browns. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't work. Oh. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so the the this person used to play with Derrick Rose, mm -hmm. and I'm not a Bulls fan. I am a Taurus, or at least that's what I've been told. So. <laughs> you guys, you don't want you don't want to know my horoscope, man. But they, they call me they call me a bum, but <laughs> what, what, hey, what? That's very. That's very specific, man. That's <laughs> month, day, and time slot of being born, man. <laughs> that, oh, we have us a bum right here. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, well yeah, Bulls, Bulls, and Bulls have always been my team. So guys, let me reveal to you who, who you're talking about. Luol Deng. Luol Deng. Do you know, can you tell something about Luol, RJ, since you're the, I'm not going to put some pressure on you, but since you're the NBA guy, yeah, you know well, that he's the first, he was a first round pick. Yeah, I don't know what pick he was. Mm, seven. I, do know, was seven. I do know that he played with uh, Derek Rose. He eventually went on to play with other teams, but his best years, I believe, was with the Bulls. He yeah. played small forward, I believe. Yeah. And small, he, power. small small in power. Okay. But he, he's like a more leaner guy. He had a good good shot. Uh, and a good overall role player. Definitely. I really like this game. He always played smooth. Uh, I even had him in my fantasy ba um, basketball team at one point, I believe. But this was post his prime years. But yeah, very smooth player. I always liked the guy. So yeah, he he, he started his life in he was born in Sudan. It's a it's an amazing story by itself. It's it's a story of a, always striving forward, never backwards. Never going backwards. He was an Iceland seeker, a political Iceland seeker. Uh, he went to asylum. Asylum, sorry. Uh, yeah. What, what did I say? Iceland. Jesus. <laughs> I was like, did he go to Iceland? Iceland, yeah. Was he? Was he? Was he? Jesus. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he, 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 he went to... Um... <laughs> oh, the heck. Anyway, um, he went to uh, the British Islands. 
Yeah, he's a Brit of nationality. And after that, he went to America for his... Um, he, went to, he went to Blair Academy. And then he got drafted. So that's, it's an amazing story. But what, what are we going to talk about? So, so Luol Deng earned over his career about 200 million. Oh, well, 136, sorry. 136 million he earned over overall. During that time, he, uh, he reinvested his money. He reinvested his money. He started his own, according to his own website. Let me share it with you guys. The investment, the D3 N9. D3 N9 investment fund. It is a diversified private fund that leverages our institutional relationship ships to access to access high caliber deal flow. We invest in both public and private markets with holdings in committees, real estate, private equity, and venture capital. We partner with the best private equity, venture capital, and real estate investment funds in the world. Acquisitions. D3 N9 focuses on opportunistic and, and acquisition opportunities, but both domestic and international. While we are open to evaluating opportunities across all asset classes, we typically invest in single and multifamily residential. So it already shows you. He's telling you what he's into. Real estate. The cash flow. We, all, we always hear guys like um, Cordon talking about cash flow, how, how, it, how it helps you, uh, how investing in real estate helps you to get that cash flow. So his main thing is the cash flow. If you go to his D3N9 website, you will also see that he's the chairman, Luol Deng, and he has a co-founder, which is Dave Gross. You always have to have a... It's always handy to have a knowledgeable co-founder in these situations. Yeah. Someone who can assist you. Because... I, I mean, you spent, don't forget, guys, you spent your first 10,000 hours to become a better basketball player. So you don't have enough time to spend on learning these things. But after your career, you have to spend another 10,000 hours to develop yourself, to become an entrepreneur. Or at least I hope you become one. Or you can become also a broadcaster someone who's on the, uh, let's say, uh, on shows, you can also make your money like that. But a lot of NBA players choose to become entrepreneurs by themselves because they have the capital. It's not like they lack the capital. At least, I hope you, you don't blow it during your career and then find out at um, first day of retirement, eh, where's my money? Yeah, 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 100%, man. And... <clears throat> you know what's interesting? There are various investment strategies you can take, but I always say it's good to whatever investment strategies you take, you, you choose. You need to stick to it. Don't jump from one to the other. Uh, some people will say cash flow, other people will flip, other people. So, I mean, it's a, this, it's a debate. Cash is king, uh, cash flow is king. And no one's talking about queens out here. Okay. Uh, you also have like... <laughs> oh, is this a shot to the queens? No. I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm following. I, I got into contact. I was checking out a show of, I don't know if you know Max Maxwell, but he is a wholesaler. He wholesales real estate. So that's an interesting business model in itself. Mm. And on his show, I, I, he interviewed or on his podcast, I have to say on his YouTube channel, he interviewed a 
a woman by the name of Michelle Murray. And her channel is Michelle D. Murray. And she also did wholesaling, but she did a very impressive thing with her company. She standardized it. And her philosophy was choose a company, build it, fire yourself from different positions. You know, you, you create process and systems and, and put people to work so you can get out. And with that money, so when you have that, let's say cash cow, you can proceed to other ventures. So a lot of ways to get there. And I mean, the, I mean, Luol Deng is poised, man. He's been poised as a player. And I wasn't, I didn't know that he was doing what he was doing. But I can't say I'm surprised. That's his MO, move in silence and, and successfully. <laughs> Real G's move in silence, they say. Yeah, yeah. Well, really? then there, there are a lot of fake ones out there. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we, open your Instagram some, and you'll see. Some cues. Some cues. <laughs> it looks like a G, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, the G ain't, ain't them. Uh, anyway. Uh, so this is, these are the earnings of Luol Deng during his career. Let me go a bit down. So he earned one hundred and. 67 million and a half but let's let's run it up to uh nine uh nine uh 69 uh 169 million over his whole career and he turned that into an astounding let me go here 125 million portfolio yeah so that's that's quite impressive. That's that's quite that's quite an amount. Don't forget, guys. They always put the earnings that the the guys earn. They never put the taxes they pay. So he's actually earned less. Yeah. The contract and... says we make fifty million, but you get if you're unlucky, you get maybe maybe twenty five, thirty. Yeah. Depending on the state. I think less. Taking into account as well that as a player. Uh, you, I mean, his house is probably more expensive than the average house. His, his living expenses are are above average. Taking into account that as an athlete, you need to pay for, you know, your team probably provides certain services and support, but you yourself also need to invest in your body and your health. So, yeah, I mean, it costs to be an athlete. You have yeah. to invest in yourself to, to be the best. But one thing I want to I want to highlight before you before you um, I, th I think it's a it's an interesting way of thinking uh, you you highlighted before about creating processes because I always say that um, if if as a manager you become well not a best manager depending on your position you have to become obsolete. If you if you create the processes as good as you think they should projects or whatever, you should become obsolete in the process. You shouldn't be there. Then then your job is done, and they can yeah. fire me. But I'm, I mean I'm I'm in my mama's basement, so I'm 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 not gonna say I'm unemployed. Probably I'm unemployed. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'm unemployed. Yeah. Maybe I should be unemployed. Anyway, so you you create processes in which you are not required to be part of and then that's that's what you want because that means that the process works how it should yeah this is an important thing in that but to bring it back to Luol 125 million and growing it's, it's a great great amount this it is it's an amazing because probably he has a, a smaller group and and with a great co-founder Dave Gross, who's a uh, Columbia University graduate, he, he he popped off. He popped off. I mean, this is uh, this is a great one. 